That's faithful to God. I that mean, is faithful to God. I am telling you what, it has been a thing. But, I mean, he, I just, I think it's a big deal. You, can I tell you something? Let me tell you something. Of course something. you can tell me something. I think we should do something for him. Well, I haven't thought of that. Okay, tell me what you got. Let's give him that out. Ooh, sit back, kick your feet up, relax, and let us lift him up today. I Look think, how he's okay. lifted us up. I think that'd years. be great. We should do it. We can. I can lift him up. Okay. Okay. I mean, yeah. <laughs> One problem. What's that? We're talking about Pastor Mike. Oh, uh, kind of heavy. He's prepared. He oh, don't that's sit. What you mean. He don't yeah. relax. Um. <laughs> uh, how we gonna? How I know them people. About this? I don't have that problem. I, mean, I know how to relax, but yeah. I I think I just tell him. We don't sit down. And we well, don't hold on, on sauce. What? Slow down. Oh. This is something we need to pray about. You know how he is on he prayer. He says we should pray. I'll pray first. I'll, oh. I'll pray first. Okay, one thought. What? Can you keep it short? <gasps> you know, Pastor always says that the prayer what means is that keep it short to and don't mean? mumble. It means I, don't mumble. I would like to keep my thoughts and my feet not go to sleep. You know, I can't even understand. <laughs> I can't even, I don't even know how to take this. I just. Well, we got to go. Ahead. And you know what? If I could look it up in the Greek, you real <laughs> maybe you make it short. Funny. You know what? John Wesley didn't pray short. John Wesley ain't up in here today. You know, you know what? Let's just let's just what? What? okay. What? We got a flip stool and we got a bag of apples. Where are we going with this one? Well, I figured if he's gonna sit down, he needed something to prop his feet up on. And while he was doing it, he could have his neck. Yeah, because you know Mr. Healthy loves... He likes apples, so I figured apples. I'd put right here. Okay. He can prop his feet up. You know what? That sounds it. like a plan. We got old guys and young guys in here. Still be sure they can take those. Well, somebody can do this. I can find a, an old guy or a young guy to be sure. Well, have you, um, have you noticed all this green in here? Oh, it is. Oh, look, they're wearing green. It, it reminds me of a country. What is it? <laughs> oh, it's where they left our cops. Oh, 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 yeah. 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 Oh, Oh, 
Uh, let's turn to 214. Right? Yeah, you did good. <laughs> That's hard. Let's turn to 214, our demos, and we're going to sing uh, All Play My Savior Lead.
that's the decree already. We can just put an amen to it and head them on out there. What a voice they didn't. Uh, I don't know how you got through that song. <laughs> Barely. Barely. Now, very end. During the introduction, my introduction, this, I don't want you to open it right now, but during the introduction, this is my outline. You will be totally impressed. <laughs> All right? So don't open it now. But during the introduction, I want you to open that. You can use this outline anytime that you want to. Okay? <laughs> so. Get that out of the way. Turn with me, with me, with me, with me, if you will, please, to Jeremiah 29. Here's your Bible test. Oh, okay, good. I'm <laughs> 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 looking for that. <laughs> Oops, bro. There's your four leaf and three leaf. Jeremiah 29. We're going to do a, a message kind of like what Pastor usually does. He does a a rather long, sometimes, introduction. <laughs> and then that short runway, and boom, we land and we're done. And, uh, so that's kind of where we're going to be at today. This might seem like a rather odd passage of scripture to look at. But uh, I've just simply entitled this, From Captivity to Compassion. From Captivity to mm. Compassion. Man. Uh, the chapter spells out 70 years of captivity to the Babylonians. That didn't have to happen, but because of rejecting the Lord and his word, the downfall was certain. That kind of sounds like uh, familiar, doesn't it? I mean, it sounds like our own country. It's amazing that the Lord hasn't taken us all out of here. Mm. Look at, at the outline now. Verse 2 says we're... This, this, this will blow you away. This will totally blow you away. Uh, let Pastor see that. Isn't that amazing? Wow. I mean, it's just jump right off the page. That's it. <laughs> I figured you needed a good laugh. So, uh, this lady has been so busy this past week with the uh, with the open house and yeah. trying to keep pastor's nose out of all this notice we're, we're green today i had no idea green green <laughs> green everybody's wearing green for the most part and uh, uh this wasn't easy to pull off the voice there was a lot of covert operation well then why are they wearing my ties <laughs> <laughs> knows we are but dust. Uh, if you have your uh, Bible with you, you'll turn it over to uh, uh, Psalm 103 in verse uh, 13. Uh, uh, Psalm 103, 13. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. For he knoweth that our frame, he remembers, he remembereth that we are but dust. And he is, he is so compassionate towards us and he always wants to draw us back. Come on back. Come on back. Um, it reminds me of a, of a guy uh, spotting for a truck driver. And he keeps telling him, come on back. Come on. Okay, stop. Mm. So uh, the Lord's always got that hand out. Come on. Come on back. You're all right. Come on back. I know you failed. I know there's been a problem. I know there's been setbacks. I know there's been a captivity. That's what it talks about here in, in, uh, in this chapter, verse 29. Even sometimes captivity might think, I'm in Tarboro, I am captive. You know, I, I was thinking about that, and uh, I don't want to expound on that, but, but however, you might think that you're in captivity. Um, so the Lord is always uh, trying to draw us back. Uh, 2 Peter, chapter 2. Second Peter chapter 2. Uh, that's wrong. 
2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 9. Let's get into the second, put in first. We usually use this uh, verse uh, regarding the unsaved, but actually this is talking about us. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to who? Us. To us. Aren't you glad about that? Mm -hmm. My, there's so many times that we foul up. There's so many times that, that if we would just would have stopped and, and asked, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but we would have just asked the Holy Spirit, what would you have me to do? Mm. We could have eliminated a lot of things. Boy. And, uh, you know, it, again, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but captivity is a terrible thing. And the Lord is long-suffering. And captivity takes many forms. Even in Tarbo, it takes many forms. Hmm. How about, here's one of the forms that you might want to consider. <laughs> financial captivity. Credit card debt and lack of money. They kind of go hand in hand, don't they? I mean, it is certainly true. That's a, that's a form of captivity. Credit card debt. Pay those things off as fast as you can. My son, my youngest son, actually put me on to this, which I really like it. I have Capital One credit card. And what I do, I use their money. I'll charge things, not, not excessively, but I'll charge things. And then when they send, send me the bill, I'll pay them off. I'm using their money. And they're not charging me any interest. Now, I'm sure they don't like this. Is this live stream? They might cut me off. But anyway, that's a good way of doing things. As long as you remember that you're going to have to pay the bill. Uh, you know, you can't go out and buy something really, really expensive. And then uh, at the end of the month, I mean, credit cards right now are charging you, what, 20, 21, 22%? I mean, it's high. Uh, we can thank the sleepy one for that. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, um, you know, interest rates are high, but you're using their money. You're using their money rather than them using your money. Isn't that something? My youngest son uh, uh, told me about that a few months ago, and uh, I finally started using it. I thought, that's a good idea. But you have, again, you have to be careful with using the credit card that you don't overspend, and then you can't pay it all off when the bill comes in. So there's financial captivity. Mm. You know there's professional captivity? Mm. Mm. There's a lot of pastors, not this one, but there's a lot of pastors that absolutely hate their job. That's true. There's, there's doctors that absolutely hate their job. There's lawyers that absolutely hate their job. I'm, and I don't doubt that. <laughs> and I know that there's some good lawyers, but... Uh, you know, most of them are, are in for, into it for the money. For most of my working career, the 25 years at Pepsi, I didn't like my job. Hmm. Throwing cases around was not my idea of having a good time. And uh, Brother Nelson's back there. You know, you're, you're up north. You're dealing with snow. I know you like snow. I don't ever want to see snow again. And <laughs> brother, <laughs> he's back there shaking his head. That's right. I've been through so much snow and ice, freezing rain, cold. Um, oh, you have to drive in that mess, and people don't want to slow down, and they they're sliding around, and, and you're trying to be careful, and they're sliding around, all those kind of things. So. For 25 of those years, I really didn't care for my job. Now, the last 15 was good because I wasn't handling anything anymore. I was delivering everything by the pallet. And if the store didn't want it, the pallet stayed on the truck, I brought it back. So uh, that was pretty easy. I called that working retirement. But professional captivity, you know, professional captivity is a terrible thing. It's good that boys it's good that you find a profession whatever that profession might be that you like to do mm -hmm. it makes life a whole lot easier mm -hmm. you know with with a young family that, that we were growing up uh, uh, my wife and i were, were uh, had a had four kids that 
you know, I had to provide for. Actually, the Lord helped him provide for me. And uh, there was times that we just barely eked by, but we never starved. You know, the Lord provided through it. So find a, a profession, something that you like to do, and then do it with all your heart. Whether that's uh, in the ministry or, or something else. Uh, you don't want to be stuck uh, with that professional captivity. And then there's uh, family captivity. You know, you might not think that that's a captive thing, but family captivity is also very real. I mean, we, we have relatives that want to tell us what to do. And that the things that they tell us might be totally outside of what the Word of God tells us. And uh, so there's family um, captivity. Uh, if you notice, uh, Pastor has mentioned uh, his favorite movie, uh, Ben Hur, we saw back a couple different times in Sunday school. And if you weren't here, you missed it. But one of my favorite movies was It's a Wonderful Life. Yes. yes. You know, George Bailey was in all three of these captivities. Mm -hmm. He had financial captivity, he owed $5,000. He had professional captivity. He hated his job. <laughs> I hate the building alone. I want to go build things. That's what he kept saying. Professional captivity. And then his family. Mary, why do we have to have all these children? <laughs> so there was all kinds of things uh, that you can learn from George Bailey. But there's all kinds of, of captivity, and I'm sure that, that you might be able to come out on your own. So we need to ask the Holy Spirit for help when it, when it comes to captivity. But I guess the most sinister form of captivity <coughs> is sin. Mm, yeah. It is. And uh, that's the most sinister. That's the one that Satan uses to his advantage. Let me take my watch out off so I don't go beyond. By the way, uh, before we get into that, um, kind of a sad day for, for Diane and I. Um, when we were saved back in Pennsylvania in 1977, October 29th, um, we went to High Point Baptist Chapel, an independent, fundamental church. Uh, it was an evangelistic service. Uh, I came forward to get saved. I didn't get saved the following Thursday. And uh, Pastor Bill Clark was our pastor. He has just passed away this past week. Um, he had a bicycle accident, of all, all things, and he cut his leg, and it got infected, and it shut down his kidneys, and he died. Oh. And it was really quick. Wow. I mean, he was, he was a pretty healthy guy, for the most part, uh, but that's what happened. And uh, they're having the memorial service tonight, but I'll tell you that, man. We cut our spiritual teeth on the word of God mm -hmm. with him. Wow. We really did. Do you know what he told us? Many times, he was an expositor. Diane and I were kind of reminiscing about the time that he did John 3.16. He exposited John 3.16. And he'd go word for word. You know how many times the word four is in the Bible? 8,400 you know, and, and he just went word for word for word. And it, it was like, oh, can we just move on? <laughs> but uh, he was amazing. But anyway, we cut our, our spiritual teeth with him. And he gave us such a good foundation. And again, his phrase was, get your nose in the book. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's what we need to do. By the way, you young guys, your nose in the book not in your phone, throw that phone away and get, get in the book. <laughs> you can it. There's all kinds of notes in this book. And if your phone ever crashes, this won't. <laughs> so anyway, that's that's free, that's a rabbit trail. <laughs> Alright, so, but anyway, the, the form of captivity that is the most um, sinister is from the wicked one is sin. You know, we, we might think about sin that, well, <clears throat> it didn't seem that bad at first. I did whatever, and nothing bad happened. But before you know it, 
you're caught up in the sin, you're hooked. Mm -hmm. After all, it's no big deal, right? But reality check, it is a big deal. It is a big deal. And uh, we want to take a quick look at Romans chapter 3. I, I promise it'll be quick. And I think you know where I'm going with this. Romans chapter 6 and verse 13 and 14. It says, Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. Did you catch that? Notice the words there. Your members. What's that, what is that talking about? It's talking about a part of your body. I think John Van uh, kind of... Um, he kind of closes that down a little bit, says body parts, which, you know, that's right. Hmm. And then it says instruments. The Greek word there, I couldn't pronounce it, Pastor, but it's, uh, it's talking about implements or a tool of offense. Think about that, a tool of, of offense. And when we yield our bodies to something or someone that goes against the scripture, we become in captivity of sin. Don't we? We sure do. We sure do. And uh, so neither, it tells us, and neither yield your members. Don't do it. Don't do it. Uh, you're yielding your members onto unrighteousness or things that aren't right according to what the scriptures say. Here's another Pastor Bill saying, anytime you see the word but, B-U-T in the scriptures, it's talking about a change of direction. Mm -hmm. So I like that because it's saying uh, neither yield your members as instruments of righteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members, body parts, as instruments, or, or this would not be a uh, tool of offense, under righteousness unto God. Mm. <clears throat> Captivity. What is it? You know, sin doesn't start out as something big right away. I mean, you might think, well, you know, I can, I can watch this thing on TV or on the internet, or I can listen to a certain style of music, or I can, the entertainment web that I call it, we can get on that, and that can shoot, boy, you can get into all yeah. kinds of trouble with that. And, uh, those are the types of things that will pull you away. Now, at first, it might not seem like, again, a big deal, but it is. It's that I was going to do a, uh, an illustration of that. My wife's in the sewing. I was going to get a spool of thread and wrap up Wilson one time. <laughs> and say, okay, Wilson, break free. Boom, he'd be able to break free. Wrap up two or three times, break free. Boom, he could probably break free. You know, he's a pretty strong guy. Yeah. But if I do it like a hundred times, mm -hmm. he's not breaking it. Yeah. He's not breaking it. And that's the subtlety of sin. That's that's wow. what a captivity does. It's slowly, it's a slow thing. And it's almost like uh, remember the cart now you'll know where I'm going with this, the old cartoon, the uh, Robin Hood. Mm -hmm. Remember that? And hiss the snake. Well, the hiss stop hissing in my ear. <laughs> and that's the subtlety of sin. It really is. Just that little, oh, it's not that bad. Relax. You know, just chill. Chill. Mm. It's, it's not that bad. Just a little bit. It's what you tolerate. That's what it comes down to. Mm. And when you tolerate something that's going to take you away from the Word of God, you better run. You better run. So anyway, the 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 uh, the other form, the fourth form of captivity, is sin. Um, the first three was uh, to financial, professional, family, and this fourth one is um, the biggest culprit: the captivity of sin. It's not a big deal, 
but it is. Okay, here's a rabbit alert here. We're going to go off, <laughs> we're going to go off the rails, Pastor Bo. We'll get back on. <laughs> I heard of a man not long ago who was asking for prayer because he was under attack. By the way, this isn't anybody in this church, so don't think that I'm, I'm talking to anybody in particular. But I did hear of this. And uh, he was asking for prayer and asked the, um, he was asking for prayer for the, for the Holy Spirit and his, well, let me back up. He was asking for prayer. So rather than asking the Holy Spirit, was I wrong about someone or something? You know, the Holy Spirit will reveal that unto you if you ask. We were just talking about this in Sunday school class. You have to ask in order for it to be able. Okay. What did I do was wrong. Uh, <laughs> in the marriage counseling, uh, that's a good question to keep asking. Sometimes I don't know what I did that was wrong. And I have to be told what I did that was wrong. You get the picture? She's a nice woman. <laughs> <laughs> Be careful. I'm getting the eye already. <laughs> but, you know, what did I do that was wrong? It's like David said to Saul, What now have I done? You know, what now? I mean, <laughs> there's so many things that I've done. What now have I done? So, anyway, um, was the attack because of what I allowed in my life? That's important to, to ask yourself that question. I, again, we're talking about the things that you watched on TV or the intertangled web or the music or your lifestyle. Did I cause this attack? Or was this really a demonic attack? Mm -hmm. I think if we're going to be honest, most of the time, it's because we caused it. The Bible tells us very clearly, make no provision, you know, don't, don't make yourself ready for sin. Make no provision of the flesh, that's what the Bible says. And uh, when we make provision, we're on the course of heading in the wrong direction. So a simple question, did I do what's right or did I do what's wrong? And then that, that uh, is a good question to ask yourself. Here's an illustration that Dr. Cook used many years ago, and I love this. He was, uh, in the late 40s, he was in charge of Youth for Christ. Mm -hmm. And this was back when Youth for Christ actually stood for something. Yeah. And uh, I wasn't around in the 40s, so you younger people just, you know. <laughs> I didn't hear him say this originally. <laughs> this was later. But... He went to Dr. Ironside, who was the pastor of uh, Moody Bible Church, wow. and uh, he was he was under attack. He was under attack. So you got a picture. Dr. Ironside was behind his desk. Dr. Cook was out sitting in a chair in front of him, and uh, he was crying the blues. Oh, oh, they're after me. They're saying all kinds of mean things about me, and I'm under attack. And, all these bad things are happening, and, and uh, I don't understand it. And you can picture this. He tells this story a lot better than I can. But you can picture Dr. Ironside in one of those wooden um, chairs that kind of rocks back. And it rocked back, and it squeaked, and he goes, Well, my boy, <laughs> if you're doing something wrong, then mend your ways. But if you're doing something right, you keep right on going in the direction that you're going. See, because a lot of people don't want to see success. Mm. Let's face it. Sometimes we want to see, let's see this guy fall flat mm. on his face. So true. But uh, anyway, that's uh, kind of a, an illustration of that. Did I do something wrong? Did I cause the attack? Or was this really the, the demonic attack? Mm. That's why it's so important, young people. What you watch, mm, yes. What you hear, because it gets into there, and uh, it's, it's a hard thing to get out. You know, I some of the songs that I haven't heard for thirty years, 
when I go into Ollie's mm -hmm. and I hear them, it's like boom. Now I can't tell you what I did yesterday, <laughs> but I can tell you that I can word for word some of those songs. And I'm thinking that's what happens. You can't. It's hard to get them out. I usually run into Ollie's, get what I want, and get out. You know. So anyway. That was a, a rabbit trail. <laughs> so let's get on into our text and we'll wrap this up. Uh, we're looking at Jeremiah 29. We're not going to read all the verses because there's some names in there that I might struggle with. <laughs> and rather than prove how I can't say the words, we'll just skip them. That's, that's the easy way to prove. It's Chapter. better because a pastor that tries to say him sometimes it ruins everything. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Jeremiah 29 1. Now, these are the words of the prophets sent from Jerusalem under the residue of the elders, which were carried away captives to the priests and to the prophets and to all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had carried away captive from Jerusalem to Babylon. Notice all the people were carried away. You know, we don't know, we've never experienced a, another nation coming in and taking over our nation. Aren't you glad about that? Mm -hmm. Ah, what a thing that must have been. Yeah. What, you know, here comes a government that comes in, they're not going to let you have church. Wow. They're not going to let you have the freedoms that you have. They're going to force you to buy electric cars and not give you the electric in order to use them. Is anybody out here? That's, that's just a side note. But anyway, the priests, the prophets, and all the people were carried away. Look in verse 5. Where am I? No, verse 4. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, unto all that are carried away captives, whom I have caused to carry away from Jerusalem unto Babylon. Remember, this is going to be a 70-year uh, carrying away. Here's what he says. Build ye houses and dwell in them. Plant gardens and eat the fruit of them. Take ye wives, beget sons and daughters. Take wives for your sons, give your daughters to husbands, that they may bear sons and daughters that ye may be increased there and not diminished. Notice what it says here. Go ahead about your business. Go ahead and do what you would normally do. You marry and, and get married and do all these things, plant your vineyards or your gardens and eat the fruit of your labor and do all these things. Notice what, uh, keep your finger here and go to Second Kings. This reminds me of, a, of another verse in 2 Kings chapter 18. 2 Kings 18 and verse 29. Now, this is uh, the, this Assyrian, the Rock Shaka, I guess that's how you pronounce it. <laughs> he was trying to tell the people, don't listen to Hezekiah. Don't listen to him. He's, he's going to tell you certain things. Don't listen to him. What he's telling you is not true. We pick it up in verse 29. Thus saith the king, Let not Hezekiah deceive you, for he shall not be able to deliver you out of his hand. And that's true. Not Hezekiah, but the Lord can. Neither let Hezekiah make you trust in the Lord, saying, The Lord will surely deliver us. And this city shall not be delivered into the hand of the king of Assyria. Hearken not to Hezekiah. For thus saith the king of Assyria, Make an agreement, look at that, Make an agreement with me, a present, and come out to me. Notice what that says, Make an agreement with me. Doesn't that sound like 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 14? Unequally yoked. We were talking about a yoke. Unequally yoked. That's what it's talking about. Mm -hmm. Make an agreement with me, and it'll go really well with you. <laughs> no, no, it won't. Make an agreement with me. And then, uh, uh, let's see, make an agreement with me by a present and come out to me 
And then, here it is again, he, he, every man his own vine, every one his fig tree, drink ye every one the waters of a cistern, until I come and take you away to a land like your own. Mm. Like your own. But you know what? It's not going to be your own. Yeah, yeah. Like your own. Not your land. And that's what it's talking about here back in Jeremiah uh, chapter 29. A place like your own, but not your own. In other words, this is going to be a, a, a type of slave type encampment. You can go and do your business. You can go do what, whatever you want to do. But, you know, it's, it's not going to, it, it's still not your land. So, that's kind of what we're looking at here. And again, you can hear that little hissing in your ear. <laughs> eh, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. It gets along just fine, but of course we're, we're going to have the thumb on you the whole time. So we go from captivity to compassion. We can wrap this up pretty quickly. In verse 7. And seek the peace of the city whither I have caused you to be carried away captive. And here it is. And pray unto the Lord for it. For in the peace thereof, ye shall have peace. Pray for peace. Even though the outside might be all messed up and things all around you think that it's all topsy-turvy. That's a great term. Uh, it might seem all messed up, but the Lord's still in control. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, let not your prophets, here's a, here, here's a warning, a, a uh, intruder alert, if you will. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, let not your prophets and your diviners that be in the midst of you deceive you, neither hearken to your, your dreams which you cause to be dreams. Verse 9, for they prophesy falsely unto you in my name. I have not sent them saith the Lord. In true God, here's a warning. Deception. We can thank the Lord that we have a pastor right here that takes the time to go through the word of God and say, thus saith the Lord, mm -hmm. and he can back it up with scripture, mm -hmm. and we don't have to worry about some strange doctrine. Mm -hmm. Strange doctrine. We don't have to worry about that. And uh, it, it's very clear in the scriptures that, that, that there's warnings, constant warnings. Be careful. Be careful. False people come in and uh, bring in um, doctrine of devils. Is that actually is what the Bible says. But compassion, again, we're talking about compassion explained. Um, you know, this is going to be a 70-year period, but the Lord's going to come back. Look at, look at this in verse 10. For thus saith the Lord, that after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon. I will visit you. Mm. I like that. I will visit. Doesn't that sound like the Lord's coming back, the Lord Jesus? Yeah. He's coming back. We don't know when, but he's coming back. You can mark it down. He's coming back. And uh, that's what he's talking about here. Not the Lord coming back, but the Lord delivering the nation of Israel out of the bondage of Babylon. Don't worry about it. The Lord's going to take care of it. Verse 11. Here's a precious. This is, I'll tell you. Yeah, this, this is a great one. If this isn't compassion of our Heavenly Father, I don't know what is. For I know, oh, I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. Isn't that precious? I'll tell you what. That's amazing. An expected end. Something that you're longing for. Something that might be down the road a little bit. But it's an expected end. You know it's going to happen. It just hasn't happened yet. I love it when the, the Bible defines itself, don't you? Mm -hmm. I mean, we. one of the other things that Pastor Bill would, would, uh, would challenge us about don't take a verse, this is where I got this, the context I did. Don't take a verse out of context. Keep reading. Read ahead. 
I heard him, a guy said, who is this lady that you keep talking about? And he said, what are you talking about? He said, read ahead. Who's, who's read ahead? <laughs> <laughs> so, so anyway, uh, keep reading. And let the Bible define itself. That way you won't get in all kinds of trouble. That's a free one. For I know the thoughts I have towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expect, expected end. From captivity to compassion. That's what we're looking at. Mm -hmm. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. We're going to wrap this up with, uh, I think I got everything in there. Yes. There's five I wills. Hmm. I like this. I like this. It says in verse, towards the end of verse 12, I will hearken unto you, and ye shall seek me and find me when ye search for me with all your hearts. So I will hearken. I'll be all ears. I'll be all ears waiting for you to call. You have to do the call. Verse 14. I will be found of you. Oh, isn't that great? Isn't it great to be found of the Lord? He's not lost, but we are. Mm -hmm. But he's always, again, he's drawing us back. Come on back. Come on back. All right. You fell down. You busted up your knees. Come on back. Come on back. I will be found. Then it says, I will turn away your captivity. Look at that. I will turn away your captivity. Whether it's a professional captivity or financial captivity or captivity of the family or captivity of sin, here it is. Here it is. Here's the answer. I will turn away your captivity if you'll just come back to me. And then it says, I will gather you oh, mm. from all nations. That's rapture there. Mm. At one time, when the trump sounds, he's going to call us all up out of here. Come on. Boom. We're going to be out of here. And that'll be great. I will gather you That's good. from all the nations. And then I have driven you, saith the Lord. And then our last I will, and I will bring you again unto the place whence I caused you to be carried away captive. I'll bring you back again. I'll tell you, if that's not compassion, I don't know what it is. He could have easily said, that nation of Israel, I am so sick and tired of them turning away from me. I am not going to do anything anymore. I, I just need to find some stones and I'll, and I'll bring a new nation up. He said he could do that. But he didn't do that. He said, I'll bring you back. I'll bring you back. Like I said, when you fall down and bust your knees up, or when you have that time that you, you know, we're good. I think Mary Ann shared this on one of her posts. We're good at pity parties, aren't we? <laughs> oh, oh, did you hear what that person said? <laughs> oh, oh my. They're really after me. And that's one of the reasons why I say stay off in your Facebook. <laughs> just, just stay off it. You know, you don't need all the drama. You really don't. But uh, anyway, he will bring you back. Isn't it great to be brought back in fellowship with him? Mm -hmm. And all yeah. it takes is a bend at me and ask the Lord, Lord, this is where I messed up. I'm sorry for my sin. Will you forgive me for it? You know what? He will. Mm -hmm. Because he died for all those sins, every one of them. Our pastor has been a, a faithful uh, preacher here for 17 years now. We haven't been here that whole time. Uh, I think it's next month we'll be here five years. That's hard to believe. Mm. Uh, make sure you let him know how much you love him, Marianne and the family. He has <coughs> faithfully proclaimed the word of God. Second Timothy, let me read that for you. If you know where I'm going. Second Timothy 4. In verse 2, it tells young Timothy, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, repute, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering 
and doctrine. All of them. This man has done this. And uh, we're thankful that he's been here for all these years. And uh, I hope that you tell him how much you appreciate it. Mm. So the question of the day is, do you want captivity for the Lord's compassion? Mm -hmm. Is it going to be professional captivity, financial captivity, family captivity, sin captivity? Why do we have all these children? <laughs> I love that part of the, yeah. the movie. It's, it's just so funny. George, you had part of that. So, anyway. Um, so, it's really our choice. Mm -hmm. We either can live in captivity or we can have the compassion of the Lord that He's always there. Come on. You're doing fine. Just <clears throat> continue on the right path. And you can do that when we trust Him. So let's pray. Amen. Lord, we thank you that you're always looking for your people to come back. And Lord, if there's anyone here that needs to come back to the ground of faith, that you would point that out to them. I can't do it, but you can. Lord, we just pray that the Holy Spirit would do the work that only he can do in each heart. And Lord, that we would not live in captivity of any of those things that have been mentioned. 